what fascinates me there is the last line. The one to say, what sort of man is this? Even the winds and the sea obey him. You know, there is a song that goes up. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He can determine we. Hallelujah. He saved them on the sea. Hallelujah. I would love personally to add. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He slept in the boat. <laughs> During the stormy wind. Hallelujah. The disciples wondered what manner of man Jesus was because according to them he rebuked the wind and the storm and the sea and they obeyed him but I say rather today what manner of man is Jesus that is slept even while there was that great wind and storm on the sea just think about it that there was this great storm and he was sleeping he was not disturbed he had a calmness of mind that will tell you how much of faith Jesus had nothing moved him that he was in the boat was wrecking he was the boat that was a storm he was the boat that was rocking by the wind and he was not moved he went, he was far asleep. Do you know what it means? To sleep is not an easy thing for those who are troubled. There are people who want to sleep, they can't sleep. People take medications to get sleep. So stay up in the night, no sleep. Here is a man, he was fast asleep, even while the boat was being rocked. There was a great storm, we are told. We moved the boat here and there, move up and down. One time I was privileged to be on a cruise from Alaska to Victoria, Canada and back to Alaska. I we had these turbulent times during the cruise. Everyone came to the middle of the ship. But I tell people were vomiting, people were having all kind of problems, were plugging their ears and everyone came, people were shouting. With the whole of that day, it was a very bad time. But after then, there was calmness. Can you imagine someone fast asleep in that kind of situation? Everybody shouting, he didn't even bother. He was fast asleep. He was not disturbed. They had to go and wake him up. That will tell you the calmness of mind that Jesus had. And that is what you know we should all pray for. That's why I love the serenity prayer. It says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Jesus had an opportunity. But quite often we are troubled. Even about the things that we cannot change. We need that serenity of mind, calmness of mind, always. Even about the things we cannot change, we worry. We bother. Someone is dead. We shout. We keep crying, shouting here and there. He's dead, he's dead. There's nothing we can do about it. If it's something we could do, then we do. That's why I say the prayer is good. To God grant us the need to accept the things that we cannot change. We cannot change those things. Just leave them. And then the courage to change things that we can. And the things we're supposed to change, many of us don't even change them. We don't even do anything about it. Someone is sick, some of us don't even take them to the hospital. We don't even take treatment. We don't even do the things, take the precautions when it's time for us to do those things. And of course, the, the wisdom to know the difference. If we know the difference between the things we cannot change and the things we can change, it will bring calmness to us. That difference requires wisdom to know that this I can change, this I cannot change. That's what brings about the serenity 
and calmness of mind. Jesus has promised us that he's going to be with us always. You know, the disciples ran to him because he was with them. It is good enough for us to know that Jesus is with us. No matter what we go through, that Jesus is with us always. That is what is good enough for us to know, and that is what is important. For as long as Jesus is with us, no matter the problem we go through, we need to be calm. You know, that was, if you look at St. Matthew's Gospel, that's the last line, the last verse. He says, I will be with you always to the end of time. I remember the promise of the Lord. I am with you even to the end. I remember the promise of the Lord. I am with you always, forever. Amen. If you understand that the Lord is with you always, then you have no reason to fear. Even when it rocks, there is wind, there is a storm. You have no reason to fear. It's like about things that you cannot change. Things that are beyond you. All you just need to know is that the Lord is with you. You will call on him and you tell him, you don't have to worry. When we worry, we give ourselves problems. A lot of people are happy intensive today because they worry so much. And often about the things that they cannot change. You have a child who has a problem. That should not weigh you down. There's nothing you can do about it. All you need to do is prayer, commit the child into God's hand. And you discover that your calmness will help. 